We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors and he parted the raging sea. My God who holds the victory. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Quest Community Church. I'm Ellie. Thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. Each week, we ask our visitors and regular attenders to fill out a Connect card found inside the bulletin or by visiting questchurchonline.com. This helps us connect with you and gives us an opportunity to come alongside you in your spiritual walk. Be sure to list any prayers or praises you may have, and Quest will pray over them on Tuesday at our weekly prayer gathering. Thanks again for taking a moment to connect with us. It's time to pack a shoebox. Quest is participating in Operation Christmas Child again this year. Bless children around the world for Christmas by grabbing a box from our lobby, taking it home to fill with gifts, and then returning it to Quest by Sunday, November 14th. If you have any questions, please contact me, Ellie, at efrench92 at gmail.com. We hope you'll join Quest for the next Reach Out on October 30th. We will be setting up at the CNR Pharmacy in West Liberty as we pass out candy during the countywide trick-or-treat from 3 to 5 p.m. This is a great way to have some fun while showing God's love in a practical way to the community. Quest is still holding baptisms in October, but we have moved the date to October 30th and 31st. Baptism is an outward sign of an inward commitment to follow Jesus. If you made a commitment to follow Jesus and are ready to be baptized, please contact April at info at questchurchonline.com. Pizza with the staff is happening on Sunday, October 31st at 12 p.m. We will be providing lunch for those who have been attending Quest online or in person for six months or less. This is a great opportunity for you to get to know the staff, ask questions about Quest, and enjoy some yummy food. Space is limited, so be sure to sign up at the resource counter or by emailing April at info at questchurchonline.com. Thanks again for being here with us today, and make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week. You can do this online at questchurchonline.com and on Facebook. Have a great weekend, everyone. I just want to talk about a couple more things. I'm Bill Walker. I'm one of the pastors here. Just wanted to talk to the people that are here today and the people that are watching online as well. Um, our worship team is always looking for new members. And if you have that talent or skill and are interested, just see Tom after the service or email him at any time. And uh, he'd be glad to talk to you about that as we are, uh, that's kind of a constant process of, of recruiting new members. And uh, again, just see Tom after the service or before or any time. And the uh, second uh, thing and the main thing I really want to talk to you about is much more serious. And that's the passing of uh, Pat Dodds uh, this past uh, Sunday. And uh, Pat was a, uh, one of the original Quest members. In fact, he and his wife Sharon were really responsible uh, for Quest coming into this area. I mean, God uses people and God used the two of them to bring Quest into this area. So his uh, services will be this weekend. Uh, visitation is tomorrow from 3 to 6. And then again on Monday from 10 to 11. And the service is at 11 o'clock. So uh, we want to keep the uh, Dodds in your prayers. And... Uh, we celebrate Pat's home going, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit on Monday when I talk to people about what happened, and, and it is a celebration. And, and one of the things I'm even saying uh, in the time I'll be speaking about Pat is that there's joy in the house because we know uh, where he is. So uh, keep, keep that in mind. Keep the Dodds uh, family in your prayers. Uh, there are tears grieving for those that are left behind, uh, but Pat's in a really good place right now, the place he was always meant to be. So uh, let's uh, say, stand as we continue worshiping this evening. There is joy in the house of the Lord, and we will worship, and we will declare 
we will praise your name through the highs and through the lows. You are faithful, you are good, and you are worthy of our praise. And we thank you for all that you've done. Yeah. you've done for us. We are forever grateful and forever will praise your name. You are worthy. devoted like a ring of silent gold like a vow that is tested like a covenant of old your love 
of his glory through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today faithful you and man faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and it's why I sing your praise well Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips. Your Father, your first, your kindness makes us whole, and your shoulder our weakness, and your strength comes our own now you're making me like you clothing me in white bringing beauty from ashes you have your bride free of all the gifts and rid of all the shame known by a true name and it's why I sing your praise well Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, you will be praised. be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on ever be on my Your praise will ever be on my lips. Now we sing of your love, your enduring love through the winter spring when the sun shines. We sing of your love forever. We praise your name. There's a grace when the heart is undefined Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and there's reckoning well, I know I will never be alone There's another in the fire Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding how I'm meant set free, there is a cross and there's a burden where another died for me. There is another in the fire. All my debt left for dead. All my debt left for dead beneath the waters. And I 
I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. Cause I know, I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire. Standing next to me, there is another in the waters, holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding, what power set me free? There is a grave that holds no body, now that power lives in me. There is another in the fire. Oh. darkness bows to him I can hear the roar in the heavens it's the space between where it's thin I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls gave in nothing stands between us nothing stands between us no other name but the name of Jesus. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. Yeah. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. Well, I know I will never be I know I will never be alone There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding How good you meant to me i count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be And I can see the light I can see the light In the darkness As the darkness bows to him I can hear the roar In the heavens As the space between west and I can feel the ground Shake beneath us As the prison walls cave in Nothing stands between us Nothing stands between us, there'll be another in the fire Standing next to me, there'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas, should I ever need reminding Good you meant to me, I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be We know that you'll be in it Every step of the way and We praise your name Let's pray. Father God, Lord, I just thank you for this time to gather and to hear your word. I thank you for the, for the amazing worship and just how we're able to create that space where we just prepare for you to speak to our hearts. 
We just invite you in here. I ask that it would be your message, not mine, that's received today, and that you would bless our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome. My name is Jessica Dolan, and I am the online campus and media pastor here at Quest. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for taking some time out to join us today. And I'd like to say hello to everyone who is watching online. I know that many of you join us each week online to worship with us. And I also know that many of you uh, who are thinking about attending will check us out online before you ever come in our doors. I just want you to know that we see you and we appreciate you joining us today. You know, we live in this age of technology that enables us to be able to be here in person and have church together while there are people also watching at home um, from their couch. And I love that we have all of these opportunities to to connect with one another um, through different avenues and just different ways. And I love that we can join online groups. You know, Facebook has this thing called groups, and I'm in multiple different groups for things that I'm interested in. I'm able to connect with people all around the world and hear what they have to say about these different interests. So we're able to connect that way. I love that on Tuesday, we have in-person prayer happening at the same time that there's a group of people gathering online on Zoom to pray over the prayer requests that are turned in here at Quest. I love the perks of technology. I think that technology is great, especially when it does exactly what it was created to do. And so if you've worked with technology, you know that that is not always the case. Now, right now, I have currently lived more of my life without a cell phone than I have lived with a cell phone, believe it or not. I can still remember the days of not having a cell phone, but I actually love my cell phone. I love having connection and information and all kinds of planning tools and everything right in my pocket. It's so much more than just me talking to people. But it's been interesting since COVID because the way that I communicate with my phone has changed a little bit. Now, I'm still primarily a texter. I prefer to text over anything, but, you know, I still talk to my husband on the phone. But there's been this interesting thing that's happened since COVID. I don't call him anymore. I have to FaceTime him. It's like I have this inability to talk to someone on the phone now. I have to actually see their face in order to feel connected to them. And what happens, and this is about the time that my insurance agent should probably plug his ears. Um, I've also developed this really bad habit of when I'm driving, don't do this. This is a bad habit. I'm trying to break it. But when I'm driving, I FaceTime him and I put my phone in the holder. And why do I need to FaceTime him while I'm driving? I don't know. I'm not looking at him. All he can see is my steering wheel. But that's my new norm now. And so as I'm driving and I'm talking to him and I'm communicating to him, inevitably this is what happens. And if you have Sprint and you live in West Liberty or Urbana, you know what I'm talking about. All of a sudden, the connection is lost but I'm chattering away. I don't even know that we've been disconnected. And so then we have to go through the whole spiel. We get back on the phone. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Here's what's happening. And always at that same point that you got disconnected, you get disconnected again. And eventually it's like, is it even worth trying? What I'm trying to communicate has been lost. It's delayed. Is it worth it? Technology is frustrating when it doesn't connect for us. But disconnection happens in other areas of our life. And when we look at disconnection through the lens of our personal lives, disconnection then becomes unhealthy and it becomes dangerous. I don't know how much you've thought about how important connectedness is. Like, I know it's important to be connected to others, but I never really looked at like health benefits or dangers with that. But I came across this article written by a Dr. Emma Seppala, who is, uh, the article was on the University of Stanford, Stanford website. And the article was exploring the science behind social connection. And they've done all these really in-depth studies to see how connectedness affects us. And it's very interesting See, they found that those who feel connected tend to live longer lives. They live longer. 
They found that those who feel connected have stronger immune systems. They get sick less. Those who feel connected have a lower rate of anxiety and depression. And they exhibit higher self-esteem and empathy. Now, some of the dangers of someone feeling disconnected are that they would have higher anxiety and depression. And this one was surprising to me. Having a sense of disconnection is actually worse for your health than smoking, obesity, or high blood pressure. I was really surprised by that. You also may have a weakened immune system if you have a feeling of disconnection. They also shared in this article that in 2004, 17 years ago, 25% of Americans said that they did not have a close personal friend that they could share a personal problem with. That was 17 years ago. That was way pre-COVID. And for some reason, I haven't researched current numbers. I feel like that's probably grown. And that made my heart hurt to think that there's 25% of Americans who don't feel like they have someone that they can go to to talk to about a problem. See, we need real connectedness with people. And we may think, mistakenly, that that means that we need to be surrounded by a lot of people and we need to have a lot of friends. But quantity is not the answer. And I say that, and I'll give you an example. Have you ever stood in a room with a whole lot of people that you know, but felt alone? Or felt like they didn't get you? I've been there before. See, it's not about quantity. It's about a feeling of connectedness and a sense of connection that actually comes from within. So it's not about having tons of friends. That's not bad. But it's about having the connection made. And that's what's so cool about our online uh, service, I think. It's because there are people right now who are not with us, but they feel connected to each and every one of us during this worship service. And not because they're surrounded by a lot of people, but because... They see us, they know that we're here, and they just have that sense of connection. So disconnection can happen in many areas of our life. We can feel disconnected from our friends. We might feel disconnected from our spouse or our peers or our church or our faith. We might feel disconnected even from ourselves. But the good news is, is that we don't have to stay feeling disconnected. We have an opportunity and a chance to move from disconnection to connection. And I'm not really surprised that science is telling us that connectedness is important because the overarching theme of God's word is connectedness. God created us for connection. He made us to be connected. And today we are going to look at what God has to say about connection in our sermon series, Transformed. But before we jump and so what God has to say about connectedness, I want to share an interview with you that Pastor Bill did with the Candle family. And the Candle family talks about how they went from being disconnected when they started coming to Quest to feeling connected and the impact that that has had on their lives. Let's watch. This is Pastor Bill Walker, and we're continuing our sermon series on Transformed. And today we're going to talk about disconnected to connected. And we have the candles with us today. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Yep, thanks for having us. We want to talk to you guys about when you came to Quest Church and how you started out. As everybody does, you don't have those connections here. And talk about how it was when you first got here and you didn't have those connections and you were disconnected. What was, how did that, the, that journey begin? Um, we left our former church and um, we were involved in a lot of things. And um, we left and we needed to take a break. Um, so when we came here, we um, were Saturday night service and we kind of came in and just left. We didn't um, connect with anybody or join anything right away. Mm -hmm. So Quest was just the church you came to. Yeah. yeah. And you know, we find that out with people when they're new to the church or they're changing churches. They just kind of need that time to just kind of settle into things. So you did that for how long? About a year? Yeah, about a year or so. Then okay. we started doing the, like the, the life groups kind of came in. That was that was big for me, at least I know five for you too. Yeah. And it is bigger for guys. I think talk about that, Ben, because you know, women are I think sometimes are more likely to join those things than we are. We kind of hang back, but what made you decide to try at least try a life group to, to connect with other 
other men and other couples. Uh, I, I think it was just the fact that uh, this was like the first place that it wasn't like a, it, it felt different. I, I don't know, maybe it's just, but it felt different. And then when we decided, hey, you know, we'll give it a try. It's a short, it's a short one, get it through and do it. And then just, I mean, it was almost instant. You kind of started connecting with the people and, and feeling good and feeling confident. That was the first time for me that it was like, hey, this is fun to be in a small group and not just go to the go to church. Yeah. I tell people, you can sit next to somebody at church for five years and you can be in life group in two weeks with them and you'll know better. So what are some other ways that you guys have been connected and what's happened since that point? Um, I feel like I've really been able to, um, since uh, joining the staff and getting to know, be in Quest Kids, um, I've really gotten to know the moms and a lot of the ladies here. Um, Life, life group's been the thing for me. Okay. So yeah. jo joining more life groups, I'm in a long, I'm in a long term men's group, which would have scared the crap out of me before. <laughs> and, and honestly, it's been one of the one of the best things that I've done. So yeah. I would definitely encourage people to join the life groups, and you can start small, and you can say, hey, I can always drop out, and you're going to see that you don't want to drop out. Yeah. And your intention was, I'll try it for a few weeks and see how it goes. That that was 100% my intention. Which is yeah. fine, and it yeah. and it worked out. Then. Yep. Yeah. Well, great. Well, we're glad you guys are super connected here now. And Megan, you mentioned you're on staff. And yeah, we, we don't start out naturally connected. We start out disconnected and we have to take those strides to connect with other people. And uh, we are the recipients of the blessings from that. So, well, thanks for being here. We appreciate hearing your story. And again, this is our transformation series, our transform series. And this is Pastor Bill Walker. And we're the candles. And we've been transformed. Well, thanks to Ben and Megan for, for sharing. And we can we just take a moment to appreciate the transparency of Ben saying that a long-term men's group uh, scared the crap out of him. <laughs> I mean, I can remember that feeling. I, I have been there. Um, but, you know, God created us for, for connection. And we're going to be talking some more about Ben and uh, Megan here in a little bit. But got to start with the reason that we were created. And one of those reasons is to be connected. And we were created to be connected with God and we were created to be connected with others. And when we look at the, oh, I've hit a button. This Next is Pastor one. Bill Thank Walker, you. And we're continuing our Can sermon series Will it go? on Transform. And today we're going to talk about there we go. disconnected to Technology. It's great when it works the way it's hey, supposed to, huh? That might have been Travis. user error, though. We want to talk so to in the creation about... count, we read that God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God knew that it was not good for man to be alone. And he says, I will make a helper suitable for him. God knew that it was not good for man to be alone. That's why we were designed by God and we were made in his image. And part of his image is his triune nature. And what that means is we were created as human beings to reflect God's nature. Part of that being the triune nature, which means that we have one God who operates in three distinct persons. And I know that that's hard to wrap your mind around. Sometimes I feel like I get it and then it slips away and it's gone again. But we have a triune God who is one God and three persons who operates together. They are all co-equal and had a part in creation. We're told in Genesis 1 that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So here we have God and we have the Holy Spirit in collaboration during creation. In John chapter 1, we're told that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is actually Jesus. So we could read this as, in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. So now we have God, and we have the Holy Spirit, and we have Jesus, the Son. Again, they're all working together in perfect collaboration. Jesus was there in the beginning. And so they imparted on us this connectedness. And when 
Adam and Eve were in the garden. Their primary relationship was with God. God walked with them in the garden. He talked with them. They had fellowship together. Because again, God knew that it was not good for them to be alone, so he gave them a human partner, and then they had God. When sin was ushered into the world, that relationship became severely fractured, and our reflection of God's image became distorted. But the story doesn't end there, because we have seen that authentic connection to God will lead to transformation. And I want to take some time to look at the book of John and in chapter 15. And in the book of John, chapter 15, we read Jesus' words as he teaches about the importance of connection to him. And whenever I read this passage, I just picture Jesus, who was the greatest object lesson teacher, standing somewhere near a vineyard or near a grapevine, and maybe he points to it or touches it, but he... they. He's showing them and they understand what he's trying to convey. And he says, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And that's because the vine is the life source. A branch disconnected from the vine cannot produce fruit. It's only when the branch remains connected to the vine that it can do what it's supposed to do, which is to be productive and bear fruit. And I'll be honest, there was a time in my life when I looked at myself as the vine. And maybe that sounds a little weird, but what I mean is it was all about me. It was about me, myself, I, what I wanted, what I desired, the life I was trying to create for myself, all that I cared about is that Jessica got her way. I was basically a good person. I mean, I didn't murder anyone. I barely beat anybody up. I, you know, I didn't steal things. Um, you know, I was a good person. But I was my vine. I was my life source. It was all about me and everything revolved around me. And over time, my life got a little tangled up. And I would work really hard to untangle it. And it seemed the harder that I worked, the more tangled it became. And uh, I find it interesting that a grapevine, if left unpruned, can grow to a length of 115 feet. That's pretty impressive. But what happens is when you allow a grapevine to get to those massive lengths, and it you leave it unpruned, it stops producing fruit. It no longer has no purpose. It's useless. It's no longer doing what it was created to do because it's not yielding fruit. And that's how my life had become. I was going through the motions. I was living my life. I was aging. I don't know that I'd say maturing, but I was aging. I was going forward in things but I was not producing any fruit. I wasn't being fruitful. Jesus tells us, I am the true vine. Jesus is the true vine. Jessica, you are not the true vine. Any other vine is an imitation. Jesus is the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. And this is why authentic connection to God leads to transformation. Because when we remain in God and he remains in us, he will then produce the good work in us. He will prune us so that we will grow even more. And the seasons of pruning are hard and they're difficult and they're painful. When God looks at you and he says, hey, that thing, that person, that attitude that you have is not good. I need to remove it so that you can grow more and be more fruitful. But in order for him to prune us and in order for us to bear fruit, we have to stay connected to him. So Jesus continues to teach about connection in verses 9 through 15, and this is the message translation, and I love how the message states this. It says, I've loved you the way my father has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. 
That's what I've done. Kept my father's commands and made myself at home in his love. What an awesome word picture that is. I mean, think about places that you felt most at home. I think about my grandparents' house and how I would come there and feel so at home there. I think about my own home and how I like to spend time there because I'm comfortable. That's what Jesus desires for us, to be so connected with him, so comfortable with him that we feel right at home. He continues, I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command, love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. So here Jesus tells us that we're supposed to love one another the way that he loves us. And he tells us in the book of Matthew that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And then the second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. So part of being connected is loving God and loving others. It is not good for man to be alone. Therefore, we need community. And community helps build connections with others. The first church in the book of Acts gives a great example of community building. It says, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily, those who are being saved. Now, I'll be honest, I used to think that Christian community was probably the most boring thing that you could ever be a part of. Just full transparency. That's what I thought as a pre-Christian, as pre-Jesus Jess, as I say. But some of my best memories have been, since I have found Jesus, of sharing a meal with other believers and having a lot of laughter and a lot of fun. And I found that it's actually quite opposite of boring And scripture is painting a picture for us of lots of laughter and a good time and where connection happens. Hebrews uh, chapter 10 says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward good love and and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together. Again, there's that theme of meeting together. As some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Ecclesiastes says two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Again, we... We're created to be in connection with God and with one another. It is not good for man to be alone. Carrie Newoff says in his book, Didn't See It Coming, that solitude is a gift from God. Isolation is not. It is a tool of the enemy. Solitude is a gift from God, but isolation is not. Because we were not created to be isolated. That's one reason why COVID has been so hard on us because we've been taken from our normal connectedness and we've been isolated in many areas. And without going too deep into it, I want to clarify the difference between isolation and solitude. Isolation is a feeling of being on your own and being lonely, while solitude is a choice that you've made to step away to quiet yourself, to re-energize yourself. Solitude does not come with a feeling of loneliness where isolation does. And the truth is, is that we have an enemy who would love to use isolation against us. He loves to isolate us, to try and confuse us, and to create distance between us and what we're supposed to be participating in and who we're supposed to be connected to. And as Pastor Bill said in his interview with the Candles, he said, we don't start out naturally connected, do we? We have to take steps in order to get connected and to maintain connection. Because that's the funny thing about connection. Just like with our cell phone where we can get disconnected, where we're rattling off and they're not even there, we need to do regular checks on ourselves and others to make sure that we're connected. Disconnection can sneak up on us. 
So here's the thing that I want to make sure that you leave with today. I want you to know, and I want you to be willing to get connected with God and other people to see how God transforms your faith. We're not naturally connected, okay? Even though we were created for connection, we're not naturally inclined to be that way. So we have to actually go out of our comfort zone and take steps to get connected. We got to be willing to do that. And connection with God happens in a lot of different ways. And one of the first ways that we get connected with God is through confession. Confession is absolutely powerful, And it's one of the first parts of us even entering into that relationship with God. It's that acknowledgement of our sins and our wrongs against God. It's admitting that, hey, my way is wrong, God, and your way is right, and I need to follow your way. I am in agreement with you. But not only is confession a part of that starting journey with God, it's a continued part of our fellowship with him. Many times it's our confession to God that jumpstarts his pruning process. It keeps us humble. He transforms us through confession and it draws us closer to him as he pours out forgiveness on us. Carrie Newoff says that when we confess our brokenness, we admit that we are not all that we pretend to be, hope to be, or could be. We own up to the fact that we are a mess. And we all pretend on some level. Some of us are better at pretending that we have it together than others, but we all pretend on some level. And when we go to God and we pour out our hearts and we lay our mess and our brokenness at his feet, he does something really amazing with that. Confession takes us to the next level. Another way that we connect with God is through communion and fellowship with him. That's just spending time with him, meditating on his word, sharing our hearts with him, belting out your favorite worship song, and just worshiping him. We connect with God through obedience. Jesus says that we are his friends if if we do what he tells us to do. We have to take those steps in obedience to connect with God. And when we do that, it shows our love and our respect for him. We connect with God through prayer, and I'm not talking about like formal prayer. A formal prayer is really great, and, and obviously it's important. But what I'm talking about is the raw, nitty-gritty, bare-your-soul conversation with God. And when I say conversation, that means that we're not just talking at God or talking to God, but we're actually creating space where we stop talking. We stop talking. That's hard for me. And we listen to what God has to say about a subject or about ourselves. We connect with him through that prayer, through that communication with him and conversation. We also connect with God through sacrifice. Again, that follows into that obedience too. Are we willing to die to ourselves? Are we willing to let go of those things that we hold so tightly in our fists because we don't want to give them up? Are we willing to let them go and not sacrifice for the sake of sacrifice, but sacrifice because we know that we serve a God who we can trust and who knows what's best for us? And this year has been a really crazy year for me. Some of you probably know I had COVID at the beginning of the year. It took me seven months to recover. Um, I've had very close family members go through COVID. I had my husband who relapsed, so we went through that. We're still working through that. Um, I've been just kind of hit from a lot of different angles. It's been a really, really crazy year. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure that God has put down the pruning shears yet. It's been one of those years. He just keeps pruning and snipping. And it's, it's painful sometimes, but When I sit and look at today, I know that I am more connected to God today than I was last year. And don't get me wrong, I don't have it all figured out. I don't. I've made a lot of mistakes of my own this year. 
Um, in fact, at one point in time, God specifically told me to not do something, and I did it anyways, because apparently I thought my way was better than God's way. And uh, it's been tough. But you know what? I'm more connected to God than ever, and I'm grateful for that, and I'm grateful for the fruit that he's producing. And transformation does not just stop when we give our lives to God. He is continuing to transform us each and every day. So we need to connect with God and see how he transforms our faith. And we need to be willing to connect to others. And you saw the video with Ben and Megan, and you saw how instrumental life groups have been in their lives. And there is a reason, y'all, that Quest really promotes life groups. There is a reason why we think that's important. There's a reason why we work so hard to get you guys plugged into life groups. And that's because we have seen firsthand the transformation that happens in people's lives through the connection with other believers, other people, and what happens in these life groups. They are powerful. And I want to take just a minute to speak to the men. We know that it's hard for you all to connect. I know. I hear from my husband all the time how hard it is for guys. But listen, just try it. Just try it. The worst thing is, is you make a couple new buddies and you don't have to talk about anything deep. We know that it's hard for men, but I think that there's value in that. And I've seen Ben Candle be transformed. I've seen my husband be transformed. I have seen multiple men who get plugged in with other groups, um, others men's groups too, just be transformed. And we would be happy to, to help you do that. I've been talking to someone uh, here at Quest who's been coming for a long time. And they're still not sure about Jesus. They have not bought into Jesus yet. But they've been coming for a long time. And so you might think, well, why would someone come to church for a very long time if they don't believe in Jesus? And I asked them this question. And she gave me one word. She said community. Coming here has been a different experience for this person than any other church they've been to. And what they found here is a community with people who are having the same struggles that they are, and suddenly they don't feel so alone in those struggles. And I can relate to that. And I'm sure that you can probably relate to that too. And I just love that they found connectedness. And we're always telling people, hey, you don't know about Jesus? That's okay. When I walked through these doors, I didn't know about Jesus. Stick around. See what else happens. That's okay community, life groups. They're really, really big. Discipleship is another part of that, and that can be one-on-one, -on -one, or that can be in the group setting, again, within the small groups. Having people that you can trust who maybe have been on the faith journey a little bit longer than you um, that can pour into you, and you can ask questions and study and dig into. It's another way to just really connect. Serving. You can... You would be amazed at how well you can connect with others by serving. Not only are you connecting with the people you're serving alongside with, but you also connect with those who you are serving. And Quest, we have lots of opportunities for you to serve in-house. We have opportunities outside of church to serve. We do a monthly reach out. We have uh, daily bread. But serving is a great way to connect with other people. Coming to church. You wouldn't think maybe that that's a great connection point because you're just here. You're not really having a lot of time to talk to people that you don't know. But again, there's something about being in a room with people or being online with other believers and feeling connected to them because of what is happening. So coming to church. Events, fellowship, we do several of those here. Just getting together for women's events or men's events. That's a great way to get connected and talk to people and get to know someone that maybe you don't know that well. The Emmaus Walk. We had two women who just recently went on an Emmaus Walk, and I think that God spoke to them in a powerful way while they were on that walk. But again, that one gives you time to connect with God and to connect with others. These are just a few of the ways that you can connect with others. You guys are probably a lot more creative than I am. But again, what I want you to walk away here with 
is that you would be willing to get connected with God and other people this week and further from this week in the coming months, in the coming years. What are you going to do to get connected deeper with God and get connected with others? What can you do specifically though this week? What are the steps that you can take to connect with others and to see how God is going to transform your faith? Maybe it's just being intentional about having an authentic conversation with someone, being genuinely interested in another person's life. Maybe it looks like taking someone out for coffee. Maybe it looks like inviting someone over for dinner or serving for the first time. Maybe you're going to connect with God a little bit deeper by carving out that quiet time. Maybe you're going to take that next step of obedience. Maybe there's something on your heart that you've been holding on to that you just need to confess. Whatever it is, make the connection. Let's get connected and see how God transforms us. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, I just thank you that you are a God who covers all the bases, Lord, and that you created us to be connected and you've given us all these avenues to connect to you and to connect to others. And Lord, I just uh, I pray, Father, that supernaturally you would just reveal to each and every one of us ways to connect deeper with you and to connect more authentically to others, Lord. And I just praise you that we can go from disconnection to connection. Lord, we just love you. We ask that you would bless our week and bless our continued time together. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand while we worship together. Oh
blessed rest of your day until we meet again.